Hey, Graystill Nation. Sully here with the Barbell Prescription. And if you've read the Barbell Prescription, Starting Strength, or Practical Programming, you probably recall seeing something like this. This concise and beautiful synthesis we owe to that irascible old gadfly, Ripito. Some call it the strength curve, but they shouldn't because that can refer to something else entirely and is not our concern today. I just call it the training curve or the Ripito curve. Of course, it's actually a family of curves plotted over a time-wise abscissa or x-axis depicting the progression of strength or other trained physical performance attribute with program complexity, rate of adaptation, theoretical performance limitation, which is itself a manifold function of genetic endowment, phenotypic variation, age, psychological factors, and whatnot, along with the corresponding program and athlete designations, novice, intermediate, advanced. Now, if you are not familiar with the training curve and the underlying concepts, you have some homework to do. Although, simple inspection of the figure, being worth a thousand words, as figures are, will be edifying in itself. In a nutshell, the figure says that in properly designed strength programs, performance improves rapidly and linearly early on, during the novice phase, when programming is simple. As strength improves, rate of adaptation falls, and programming must become more complex in the intermediate programming range. And as more time goes by, even moderate gains in performance come at the cost of increased time and training complexity. And the athlete is in advanced programming. Because the universe is all about diminishing returns. The training curve does not endorse this cosmic maleficence. It merely accommodates it. And it should be a simple matter for you to locate yourself on this curve and that would be a salutary exercise. Take a moment, we'll wait. So where are you on the curve? Let us know in the comments and give us a like while you're at it. I myself am glued to a region on the flat part of the curve. Now I am hardly the strongest dude around, but my overall strength performance is quite adequate for my demographic. Now, being on the flat part of the training curve and in my seventh decade, I am particularly afflicted by the law of diminishing returns depicted in the figure. Long gone are my opportunities to make rapid gains in strength. To put up a PR in my squat, press, or deadlift would entail serious commitments. Not out of reach, but significant. So. A careful calculation is in order, balancing costs and benefits, evaluating risks and rewards. In addition, like all of you, I am vulnerable to the vagaries of life. Just as I inch closer to a PR, there's an illness or a death in the family or an unanticipated road trip or other life stressor, and I lose ground. And then I make it up. And then I lose it again. I spend a lot of time running hard to stand still. And the stronger among you find that you're doing the same. Well, we can illustrate this common late stage training pattern by making some fanciful elaborations to Ripito's curve. Strong, established athletes will find themselves going back and forth along a short region of the training curve, toward the right when things are going well, and toward the left when life happens. We can call this the nominally advanced zone, or the NAS, for want of a better terminology at the moment. The athlete, to invoke one of my favorite metaphors, becomes Sisyphus, Albert Camus' mythical embodiment of the absurdity of life, condemned to roll a boulder up a steep hill, the NAS hill, only to watch it roll back down over and over again, forever. And, according to Camus, to be happy doing it. The Sisyphean athlete, that's you and me, has significant markers and ranges of costs and commitments to consider. At the left border of the NAS, the athlete risks losing enough strength to fall off the NAS entirely 
and to detrain so significantly that a major commitment of effort and time would be required to regain his position in the zone. We're talking about a protracted linear progression and intermediate programming to claw his way back up. At the right border of the NAS, things are going well, and the athlete is confronted by the opportunity to extend his performance, to extend his NAS beyond its current reach. Two borders, two sets of costs. At the left end, the athlete should make any commitments his health, capacities, and situation will allow to avoid falling off the NAS entirely. At the right end, the athlete has to consider the cost-reward ratio of extending the NAS. The rewards are, of course, a matter of individual aspiration and value. The costs include time, effort, increased work volume, ever-increasing demands for precision in programming and performance, increased training complexity, the almost universal need for intensive coaching, increased risk of injury, soreness, and personal sacrifices that constrain quality of life, which from our perspective is not the point. Now this is not to say that the athlete should never try to extend his NAS, far from it. Smaller increases in the NAS come with smaller costs and may well be worth it to the individual athlete. In fact, my default judgment is to always aim for increases in the NAS, just to hang on. Most of the time, the cosmos will slap us back before we even get to the right hand marker. In other words, a lot of this is out of your hands. For example, over the last couple of months, I've made sacrifices in time, soreness, and training complexity to get as close as possible to my all-time performance records because recent medical issues robbed me of strength and certain procedures and treatments in the near future will do likewise. I'm pushing my boulder hard to the right end of the NAS these days because I know there's probably some serious downhill action coming. It's the same for everybody else on the flat part of the curve. A minor back tweak here, a visit to a sick relative there, the odd vacation or pandemic. These things throw a monkey wrench into the tightly tailored, consistent, committed programming that keep a late intermediate or advanced athlete strong and getting stronger. And so for many, if not most of us who have advanced late intermediate or advanced training, much of our programming and decision making is made by coach life. Coach life is a capricious, unfeeling bastard. But perhaps he throws us the odd illness, back tweak, summer construction project, or nude volleyball championship to force us to use our strength and to keep us from pushing our training too far too fast. Who can say? Coach life is disagreeable, but he's also inscrutable. We cannot fathom his moods. What we do know is that no matter how far we have extended our NAS to the right, one day the boulder will roll downhill to the left and we'll have to roll it back up again as best we can. That is our shared fate as athletes. And as Camus told us, we must imagine Sisyphus happy. I'll imagine you training hard and happy and I hope I'm not far off the mark. Thanks for watching.